Hello everyone, welcome to the daily current affair analysis from Veranda IAS. Today, we are going to see some of the important current affair topic from 1st of June 2023. Moving on to the topics of the day. The first topic will be treatment worth Rs 61,501 crore provided under PMJAY scheme. So students, to which GS topic can we map it to? We can map that to GS2 governance issues relating to development and management of social sector or services relating to health. Then the second topic will be world's largest grain storage plan sent to implement pilot project in 10 districts which can also be mapped to GS2 governance, government policies and interventions. The third topic will be encroachment pushes Himalayan brown bears into Kashmir's villages, which can be mapped to GS3 environment. So we can see that these three are the topics that we are going to see in our today's current affair video and the timestamps of these topics will be also given in the description. So those who haven't yet subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe and follow us. Moving on to the first topic. Treatment worth 61,501 crore provided under Prime Minister JAY scheme that is Jan Arugya Yojana scheme. Now let us see what is the context of this news. So different chronic diseases like that of the cancer treatment, emergency care, orthopedic and urology that is kidney related ailments are the top diseases of the tertiary care specialty treatment that is availed by beneficiaries under the Aishman Bharat Pradhan Mandri Jan Arugya Yojana or ABPMJAY as released on a report by health ministry. So not only that, we have also got very interesting statistics on the report released by the health ministry that is approximately 49% of the Ayushman card recipients are women and over 48% of the total authorized hospital admissions have also been availed by women. Not only that, we can see that this scheme is being implemented in 33 states and union territories except that of Delhi, Odisha and also in West Bengal. Now let us see more about PMJAY, which is also one of the most important scheme. This is the world's largest health insurance or assurance scheme fully financed by the government because it is being implemented in the world's largest democracy. It is launched in February 2018, which offers a sum insured of rupees 5 lakh per family for secondary care. What do you mean by secondary care? Uh, that doesn't involve a super specialist that is called as secondary care as well as it is also covering for tertiary care treatment that is any kind of a uh, disease which involves a super specialty that is also being covered and this scheme was launched in february 2018 wherein what is that uh, sum insured it is five lakhs per family for secondary care and tertiary care so under this scheme cashless as well as paperless access to services are provided to the beneficiaries at the empaneled hospitals and also this health package covers surgery, medical and daycare treatments, cost of medicines and also including the diagnosis. Now let us understand who all are the beneficiaries of this scheme. So this is an entitlement based scheme that targets the beneficiaries as and when identified by the socio-economic caste census data, SCCC data that is based on their social level and also based on their economic level, they, uh, people will be decided as per the data uh, whether they are beneficiaries or not. Now let us understand about the funding. So if you see, the funding for the scheme is based on a shared basis. That is 60 is to 40 for all states and union territories with their own legislator. 90 is to 10 with the northeastern states, Himachal and Uttarakhand. And also 100% central funding for union territories without any legislature. So primarily you have to understand that it is a shared kind of a scheme wherein 60% of the uh, uh, cost have to be bear by the central government and 40% have to be bear by the uh, state government. So which is the not? agency for the implementation of this scheme it is the national health authority or nha which was being constituted as an autonomous entity under the society registration act of 1860 for what for the effective implementation of the scheme with the allying or uh, in alliance with the state governments so when it comes with comes to the state government uh, in the states we have the state health agency which is the apex body for the state for the implementation of this scheme now, definitely, when we discuss about each scheme, we have to understand about the challenges faced by the scheme. So here also, different challenges are there in implementing of the scheme. One is cooperation of states. That is, health is a state subject. We already know when we discuss about the central list, uh, state list and the concurrent list, we can see that health is coming as a state subject. Uh, and under that, states are being given a autonomy or given a burden of 40% of the funding. It have to be done by the states. 
so wherein we can see that many states like that west bengal and odisha haven't been yet implemented the pmgay and this will be creating a kind of one uh, a kind of a disruption in the uh, uniform application of the scheme throughout our country right uh, so all the states are not willing or the cooperation of states is one of the most important challenges faced by pmj then the what the burden of the course so we can see that this kind of a profitable hospital that is for profit hospital hospitals which are definitely these private hospitals which are looking for profits they see this kind of a government's pro pro proposals as very unviable they are citing it that the government will reimburse this kind of a cashless treatment or this kind of a uh, uh, cash for these treatments only after a long period of time or they are not finding this uh, 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 this uh, reimbursement from the government as one of the viable one and we can see right nowadays many of the government or sorry the private hospitals are not uh, uh, being empaneled under this scheme as such then what inadequate health capacities we can see that lot of government hospitals are ill equipped there is no proper uh, facilities available in the government hospitals because of this public private partnership is becoming very very important so that is also one another challenge then unnecessary treatment so we can see that many uh, private hospitals who have got empaneled they are uh, referring for unnecessary treatment without any proper guidelines or anything so that they will get a, get the uh, reimbursement from the government so what we are saying they without following any strict notified guidelines and standards protocols they are referring for unnecessary treatment that is also one another challenge faced by this scheme now let us understand what is the way forward so in order to meet our universal health coverage so we can see that this scheme is a real opportunity for us to meet our uh, principles that we have to achieve under the universal health coverage and this will require an injection of resources into a different underfunded health system as well as focusing on interrelated issues of governance quality control etc in each of the spheres or levels of the governance in health sector then making good use of technology and innovation it will definitely reduce the overall cost of healthcare and ai powered mobile applications will give high quality low cost patient centric smart wellness solution then this scalable and interoperable IT platform for Aishman Bharat is a positive step that was taken in the direction also. Moving on to the next topic, world's largest grain storage plan centered to implement pilot project in 10 districts. So let us see what is the context. Recently, the UNI cabinet approved forming and empowering an inter-ministerial committee called as IMC to create the world's largest grain storage plan in the cooperative sector. So, in order to ensure a time-bound and uniform implementation of this plan in a very professional manner, what did the Ministry of Cooperation did? They will be implementing a pilot project in at least 10 selected districts of the country. So, this pilot project would provide valuable insights into various regional requirements of the project like that of uh, uh, learnings from which will be suitably incorporated for a countrywide implementation of the plan. So any project, let it be any project, we can see that a pilot project will be implemented in a selected district. So here also we can see that 10 districts will be selected for uh, as a uh, as a place for implementing this as a, a pilot project. And based on the learning from this, 10 districts will be making the guidelines for making it into a pan-Indian project. So we can see that under this scheme, an interministerial committee or IMC will be formed under the chairmanship of the Minister of Cooperation with ministers of agriculture and farmers welfare, consumers affairs, food and public distribution, food processing industry secretaries as members to modify guidelines, implementation methodologies of schemes to respective ministries as and when the need arise. So students, here you should understand that if you see also the Minister of Jal Shakti, like we can see that in the present governance, a lot of ministries are coming together and working towards achieving a common goal. That is very, very important with respect to implementing a good governance. So earlier what happens, there will be this kind of red tapeism will happen within the government system itself. Suppose uh, 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 an approval to be, uh, uh, we need an approval for the implementation of a project from one particular department or a different ministry, it will be pending for there for many, uh, maybe one or two years uh, or as the time demands. So we can see that right now, when such kind of a committees with the representatives or, or, or ministers themselves as representatives from different, different, different dimensions or, uh, or ministries, this common goal or the uh, or the uh, uh, or, or how we are able to reach the common goal, it is going to increase. Now, let us understand what is the primary aim of this thing. 
it is to address the shortage of agricultural storage infrastructure in the country by facilitating the establishment of go-downs at the primary level, agricultural credit societies and also enable this kind of a primary agricultural credit society to undertake various other activities. So, we are uh, uh, aiming to becoming the uh, like uh, what to say uh, the, 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 the global uh, grain storage uh, level platform so to set as the right example in front of the whole world okay moving on to the next topic encroachment pushes himalayan brown bears into kashmir's village which can also be an example with respect to the man animal conflict what is the context a himalayan brown bear was recently captured by the jammu and kashmir wildlife department at rajwara in the north kashmir district of hanwara now let us discuss about the himalayan brown bear so this is a large carnivore found in the high altitude regions of the Himalayas and its scientific name is Ursus Arctos Isabellinus. And let us see about the distribution of this bread. So they are normally found in the northwestern and the central part of Himalaya which includes the countries like that of Pakistan, India, Nepal, the Tibetan Autonomous Region of China and also the Bhutan and which is generally found above uh, the 3000 and be uh, below 5500 meters that is 9800 and 18000 feet between above the sea level. And within India, we can see that it is being seen as an isolated population in the fragmented alpine and subalpine habitats of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and also in Uttarakhand. What are the features of this one? So this is the largest mammal which we can see in the region and males reaching up to 2.2 meter longs while females are a little smaller. And also they have a kind of a omnivorous and hibernate character in dense during the winter and also it has thick fur which is most often sandy reddish brown in the color now let us see about the conservation status which is very very important as per iucn red list it is a critically endangered species and that is why it is there in the schedule one of wildlife protection act of 1972 and also it comes under the appendix one of sites so what is sites friends sites sites is actually convention on international trade in endangered species of wild flora and fauna moving on to the question of the day which of the following is a key objective of the Pradhan Mandri Jan Aroke Yojana? Improving access to education for underprivileged children, enhancing rural infrastructure development, providing financial protection against catastrophic healthcare expenses, promoting women's empowerment through skill development. So we have clearly and detailed in detail we have seen about the uh, the, uh, about this thing we can see that it is against providing financial protection against catastrophic healthcare expenses. So C is the right answer. So with that we are going to the conclusion of our today's current affair analysis i hope the session was really useful for you so unless and until we meet next time this is prince j signing off thank you so much